Hi, welcome along to a Siemens 1200 version uh, setup. So we are going to dive right in. We're going to create a new project and this will be a 1500 setup for Tia Portal. Again, name can be whatever you so wish. Uh, pathway again, my default. I'm running version 19 of Tia Portal on my particular laptop at the minute and my author is set as whatever you're, you're logged in as. Again, comment can be whatever you so wish to have for your project. I'm currently just going to leave it blank. So we're going to hit create. Drops down to the next, next area. So for the 1500s, we are able to use the unconfigured device setup. So we're going to show you that. So we're going to configure device, brand new project. So there's no devices there. We add a new device and we need to make sure we select the right family of controller, which is the 1500. Hop into the CPU. Now we do have, um, a 1516 and a 1516F uh, available in the room. Uh, we are going to use the unspecified CPU. It's the top option here. Um, there's a few wee bits still to, to the right. So it's the SIP Plus and SIP Plus Real, which we don't have in here. So it's the top option. There's only one underneath of that. And then we're going to click Add. So that's now going to make the software via the network find out what it's connected to uh, rather than to having to tell it. So on this particular page, we are in the device setup and we can press the detect option here, which is the easiest method. You need to then go via your ethernet as how I'm connected uh, and hit start search. Now mine finds quite a few controllers that are available within the room at the minute. And the one I particularly want is this 10.100, just here, it's sitting just up behind me so I can flash LED. I can make sure the LEDs flash, which they are. Uh, so I'm guaranteed that that's the correct one that I want. I can now press the detect button and we'll now go via the network and find out what particular items are connected to it. So it's popped up here nicely and it's got the correct type of CPU. What's nice about this is it only, not only does it pull down the correct firmware and everything, uh, but it also sets your IP address. You don't need to now set that again. So for the 1500 range, it's the easiest method we have. You can go in and just double check Double click on your CPU brings this up. Click on the profit interface. You just scroll down a little bit. You'll see that the IP address that I originally was trying to find has already been set within the project for us, which is very handy. Again, I'm not going to go into too much programming or PLC tags, other than the fact I'm just going to throw something in uh, to make it very handy to visually see that we have something working. Have an open contact here, and again, just using the very first one available, I0. 0 and Q0.0 .0. and just for the sake of adding and use normally close as well very quickly there's I0.0 control a different output this time of Q0.1 again I'm not going to bother with the tags other than to show you that they are there show all tags that they have appeared in your tag table so at this point without doing any further program or any other setup we want to download and make sure we're happy so we'll press the compile button. Now with the 1500 we should get, which we are getting, an error initially because these particular ones it says the password must not be empty. And you really just have to acknowledge the fact. So change this to full access. We are able to leave it blank at this point now. We can get rid of that again. Go back, click on your compile one more time. And although we have two warnings, they're no longer errors this time. So it's telling you as a warning, the, the PLC does not contain a configure protection level. That is perfectly fine. That's what we're happy with. And also tells us that the password uh, does not contain any password protection. Again, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. We're now able to hit the download button. So errors are bad. Warnings will still let you download. So here is my setup here. 192.168.10.100. That is what I have my project because I pulled it already from my unspecified CPU. All this is previously set up. I don't really need to do anything. We triple check one more time with the flash LEDs, which they are. So we're able to hit the load button. Now this particular one, which is software synchronization, basically what this is doing is saying that the items that are here that are part of the software are not the same as what's currently in the PLC. So all you're saying is agree and continue without synchronization. So you're not trying to match them up and then Sometimes, depends who was last at the PLC, you may have to do a stop all here. Currently, we're fine, so we can just press load. 
and then once this finishes we'll be able to press finish and that will reboot the PLC with the newly installed software. So press finish and I can see the PLC behind me is booting up and goes back into run mode and I can go to my main. I can go on the monitor mode here to be able to see it live. I see the left hand side all turning green showing that they are currently online and then on the right hand side part of the section here which is my OB1 block I can see that Q0.1 is currently active which it is I see the light currently on I can operate the button and you can see the changeover of the two on the screen being changed over and then visually in front of me I can see the uh, uh, the lights change over as well, the, the actual physical lights. And that is a 1500 setup guide.